I know it sounds harsh saying it this way, but it's just the way it is. The people we were using as targets were rival cartel members. There used to be uh, 50, 60, sometimes over 100 people, just like cattle for the slaughterhouse. And um, there was an area that they, there's a house. They throw them in there. They tell them, look, man, if you can make it out of here alive, we'll give you your freedom. So these people, they're fighting for their lives. In all, how many people did you kill? No idea. No idea? <laughs> you lost track? Okay, so... I mean, could you guess? Are we talking like 10, 20, 30, 50? Between 20 and 30. When it comes to the wrath of the cartel, especially notoriously evil groups like Los Zetas, there is really no punishment too cruel and inhumane to be considered. The cartel loves to utilize torture, and some of the methods that they prefer are so heinous and disturbing that it's hard to believe that those responsible are truly human. From feeding a human being to tigers while they are still alive to public executions caught on camera for the world to see, these torture methods are sure to keep you up at night. Who are Los Zetas? Los Zetas are one of the most infamous and brutal drug cartels in Mexico. They were formed in the late 1990s by former members of the Mexican Armed Forces, who were initially recruited by the Gulf Cartel to serve as bodyguards for its leader, Ociel Cardenas Guillén. To fully understand how this group came to be, we have to look back in time to the late 1990s. At the time, the Mexican city Nuevo Laredo, which lies along the banks of the Rio Grande, was becoming a hotbed for drug trafficking and cartel activity. In fact, it was through these illegal activities that the area was making the majority of its money. When Ociel Cardenas Guillén entered the scene, he could promise things to former Mexican military men that the military hadn't been able to provide for them. These things sounded very appealing to them. Nuevo Laredo is more important than almost any other area in Mexico, and that's why it's a battleground. It's a crown jewel for drug trafficking. Everybody wants that. Si andas así con, se te mocha la lengua. Si andas de dedo, se te mochan los dedos. Si metes la cabeza donde no te llaman, se te mocha la cabeza. Soy de los Zetas. El proceso más que nada fue que nos llegó el patrón, nos ofreció mejor paga. Ociel was a genius at being able to read people and manipulate them. He was brilliant at influencing people to do things that they shouldn't be doing. Carros, casas, todo mejor estable que la milicia no nos daban. Se opta por this group of military men turned cartel members would eventually become called Los Zetas. In the special forces, they had radio code with the Z letter. So they would have like, Zeta dos pendiente, be like, you know, Z2, uh, I'm on alert. And they quickly became called the Zetas or the Zs after that radio code. When forging his own cartel group, Ociel Cardenas Guillén wanted people with a unique set of skills who were tough and disciplined. These former military men fit the bill. Ociel saw in them a discipline that your regular trafficker did not have, and that was a militarized discipline. A respect for chain of command, loyalty, the willing to attack the hill when told, uh, regardless of the outcome and it wasn't long before they grew in both strength and numbers. In the following years, OCL would spend millions of dollars as he continued to build his Los Zetas army. We saw that the Zetas were becoming a threat. There was definitely a foreboding of things to come as the Zetas began to grow and become stronger, and they were learning the drug trade from the Gulf Cartel. By 2003, OCL had about 200 soldiers in his new army. 
They were all former military members. Meanwhile, the government had become aware of what he was up to and was desperate to bring him down before things could get even more out of control. There was soon a $2 million bounty posted in return for information leading to his capture. By the mid-2000s, Los Zetas had already established themselves as a formidable force. They had become known for their violent confrontations with other gangs. They also played a major role in stopping the advance of the Sinaloa cartel in the city of Nuevo Laredo. Their military training and tactics set a precedent for other cartels, leading to the militarization of organized crime in Mexico which in turn resulted in increased bloodshed. With multiple government organizations hot on OCL's tail, it was only a matter of time before he was tracked down and apprehended. OCL is definitely in the crosshairs of, of the FBI and DEA. He is public enemy number one. The Mexican army eventually caught up with the cartel leader. The arrest like a scene out of Afghanistan, Iraq. The Mexican military, I believe, may have lost one or two soldiers during the course of that gun battle. Well, Ciel survived. He was apprehended, but it was quite the shootout. OCL was arrested in 2003 and extradited in 2007. Mant might have thought that with the downfall of their leader, Los Zetas would fall as well, or at least decrease in power. But that's not what happened. Instead, they took a more active leadership role within the Gulf Cartel, and their influence grew even more. Gruesome Propaganda Aside from their military skills, the group also became notorious for popularizing the use of especially gruesome and disturbing propaganda videos. These videos typically feature horrific executions designed to instill fear in their enemies and anyone who might oppose them. While they were not the first to film such executions, Los Zetas certainly brought this tactic to the forefront and it continues to be used by various cartels today, including the cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación, CJNG. This kind of propaganda's sole purpose was not always just to intimidate the enemies of Los Zetas. Sometimes they would use it to attract new members. In April 2008, a huge banner appeared over a busy highway in Nuevo Laredo, a key drug trafficking city on the US-Mexico border. This turned out to be a recruitment poster for the ultra-violent Zetas cartel, offering men with military experience, good salaries, food, and benefits for joining their emerging criminal army. It may sound crazy, a criminal group advertising themselves in such a bold way in the middle of a public roadway. Yet this is the way of life Los Zetas was notorious for. They're afraid of nothing, and they especially aren't worried about following the rules. The Are You Falling Asleep Morena video. One thing that Los Zetas are extremely unforgiving about is when one of their own betrays them. That is something that they made extremely clear back in 2018 with an extremely brutal publicly released video that has become known as the Are You Falling Asleep Morena? The video is so extremely graphic that it has been scrubbed from most corners of the internet, all but for a few snippets and screenshots. The man that this now notorious video is featured around is not named. It is revealed only that he is a former Los Zetas member. He allegedly betrayed the cartel by switching his allegiance to another criminal organization and paid the ultimate price by being horrifically tortured and killed, all while the whole thing was being recorded. The video is set in a forested area during the daytime. This was likely done to make sure that all those who would eventually watch this video would have a clear view of the horrific events. The victim, dressed only in his underwear, is bound with his hands tied behind his back, making him defenseless. Two Sicarios, hitmen, stand beside him, with one holding his head up by the hair to ensure he faces the camera. The person filming the video accuses the victim of being a traitor, referring to him as Morena. In the video, one of the executioners appears to be about to kill the victim by slashing his throat with a machete, but the person standing behind the counter stops him, urging him to make the process slower. What they decide to do next is so evil and so despicable that it is hard to even really think about. But essentially, they began to dismember the victim by cutting off one body part at a time 
all while he was still alive and fully conscious. They begin with one of his legs using a machete. The machete slices through the bone in just a few strikes, leaving the foot attached only by skin and flesh. The Sicario attempts to tear off the foot with his hands, but eventually uses the machete to finish the job. It's hard to even fathom how much pain this poor man must be in at this point. He screams and pleads for mercy, but the cameraman just mocks him, saying, how do you think he felt? He seems to be referring to someone the victim had allegedly betrayed. The torture continues as the executioners severs the victim's other foot, then moves on to his arms. The victim's screams are nothing short of animalistic, as he endures unimaginable agony. Despite the severe blood loss and pain that he is experiencing, the victim remains conscious for most of the nightmarish ordeal, swaying and eventually collapsing from the shock. The video, which is about three minutes in length, ends with the executioner continuing to hack away at the victim's one last remaining arm, while the cameraman laughs and jokes as if this whole thing is just some sort of sick, sadistic game. Clearly, only a true monster with no humanity could be capable of something this evil. The Dismemberment of Multiple Women when it comes to the brutality of a lot of cartels, many believe that women and children should be kept out of the violence. They are considered strictly off limits, but that's not the case with Los Zetas. With them, nothing is off the table. Another video that Los Zetas Infamous recorded and released featured their brutal execution of four women. The video was released in the summer of 2014 during the height of the war between Los Zetas and the Gulf Cartel and quickly became known as one of the most brutal cartel execution videos of all time. While three of the victims' identities were never confirmed, one of them is believed to have been the infamous La Guerra Loca, otherwise known as the Crazy Witch. La Guerra Loca was a feared and ruthless member of the The Gulf Cartel, the rival of Los Zetas. She had long been a high priority target for them. This extremely gory and disturbing video is about five minutes in length. It begins with the women kneeling on the ground, surrounded by heavily armed assassins. Three of the four women have been stripped of their tops, likely as part of an attempt to dehumanize and humiliate them. One of the men interrogates the women in a loud voice. He is vicious and slaps one of the women for not answering quickly enough, later hitting another with the barrel of his gun. Despite all of this abuse, this interrogation would end up being pretty pointless for Los Zetas because none of the women were willing to give up any important information. Eventually, when the executioners must have realized they weren't going to get what they wanted out of the women, they went down the line and began brutally killing each of them. Screaming and cries of terror can be heard as the nightmare begins. The woman on the far left has her throat cut with a hunting blade while the next woman is killed instantly with an axe blow to the back of the neck. La Guerra Loca, suspected to be the woman on the far right, has her throat cut with a machete, and the fourth woman has her carotid artery severed by the same executioner. Even after all the women are dead, these evil men are still continuing to have their fun. They begin mutating the victims' bodies, all while laughing, joking, and making fun of them. This gruesome video came as a disturbing shock to the world when it was released. Even receiving coverage from mainstream media, it proved the brutal reality of women being involved in Mexican drug cartels and the complete disregard for any supposed code of honor among organized crime groups. Fed alive to tigers. Now, this next method, while extremely horrific, cannot be solely attributed to the original Los Los Zetas because other factions that have split off from this group have also been known to participate in it before, including members of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, or JNCG. Its next particularly sadistic method is one that the four sons of notorious drug kingpin El Chapo are reportedly particularly fond of. The Chapitos, as they have become known, like to inflict as much terror and pain as possible on their victims. What better way to do that than to literally feed them alive to tigers? The United States Justice Department has relentlessly pursued the Chapitos for not only the horrendous torture methods, but their role in the fentanyl war which is being raged across the country. Attorney General Merrick B. Garland and the rest of his team at the United States Justice Department shocked the nation in 2023 when they detailed some of the horrific ways that the Chapitos torture and execute their victims. This included not only feeding them to wild animals, but injecting them over and over again with fentanyl. 
The Chapitos control this global criminal enterprise, and they use ruthless violence to protect it. Indeed, death and destruction are central to their whole operation. To dominate the fentanyl supply chain, the Chapitos kill, kidnap, and torture anyone who gets in the way. In Mexico, they fed their enemies alive to tigers, electrocuted them, waterboarded them, and shot them at close range with a 50 caliber machine gun. If all of those things don't already sound horrific enough, there's more. Back in 2017, these same four brothers were reportedly responsible for the two of two Mexican investigators who were working for federal law enforcement. What they did to these two men is nothing short of sadistic and inhumane. The Chapitos reportedly ordered for one of these men to be interrogated and then killed. But the second victim was the one they decided to have fun with. They ordered their men to torture him in front of them as they watched for hours on end. The way that this was carried out was very creative and clearly intended to cause as much pain as possible. Corkscrews were inserted into the victim's muscles. They were then ripped back out by one, but the pain didn't stop there. They then placed burning hot chilies in the victim's nose and on his open wounds. It was only after he had suffered as much pain as he could possibly take that he finally ended his life. The To Live and Die Sicario Video as you play the video, you are met with the sight of a captive who is sitting on the ground with his hands tied behind his back, and he has had his clothes stripped. One of his ankles is also bleeding severely. Standing behind the victim are three members of the old school Zetas. They are all dressed in camo combat fatigue, with their faces concealed, and they are all armed with assault rifles. The video has been recorded in daylight hours in a wooded area. The first 30 seconds or so is the interrogation segment. The Sicarios ask the victim various questions, and the captive claims to be a member of Cartel del Noreste. The victim states that he came to the Ciudad Mante region, along with three other Sicarios, in his words, to heat up the plaza. Once the interrogation segment is over, one of the Sicarios who is holding a machete then walks in front of the victim, before pulling his legs so that they are outstretched. The To Live and Die Sicario video is yet another torture and execution video that Los Zetas have taken responsibility for. This video, which was released in 2017, was actually filmed by the Old School Zetas, which is a splinter group of the original Zetas. This particular group is from the Ciudad Monte region of Tamaulipas. This video, which is over two minutes long, is about as bad as it can possibly get and features the execution of a rival cartel member from the Northeast Cartel or Cartel del Noreste. It begins with the victim sitting on the ground, his hands tied behind his back, and his clothes have been stripped off. He is surrounded by three assassins, all dressed in camouflage, with their faces concealed. The video is filmed during daylight hours, in a wooded area. In the first portion of the video, the assassins interrogate the victim, and he confessed that he is, in fact, a member of the rival cartel. He tells them that he and three other Sicarios came to the region to heat up the plaza, a term used in cartel slang to describe causing trouble in an area controlled by a rival group. His confession doesn't earn him an ounce of mercy from his captors, however, and one of the executioners then begins an incredibly bloody and disturbing process of dismembering him. He starts by attempting to hack off the victim's feet, causing the victim to scream uncontrollably. Even after both of his feet have been chopped off, the victim is still fully conscious and awake. While in sheer agony, he pleads for mercy, repeating the phrase, no, por favor, no, please. But still, the executioner has no mercy and moves on to the victim's hands, which are still tied behind his back. While watching this horrific scene, you can only hope that the victim will pass out so he no longer has to witness the unspeakable things that are being done to him. But unfortunately, he stays fully awake until his executioner finishes the last step, which is to sever his neck with a machete. Despite the fact that his hands have been removed, the victim still instinctively tries to protect his neck before the machete finally ends his life. Once the victim is dead and his head has been removed, the executioner holds it up to the camera as if it is some sort of sick prize. An ex-hitman tells all. When you hear stories that are as horrific as these, it is impossible not to wonder how the Los Zetas and other cartel members like them got to be so evil. Clearly, most people are not born evil like this, but become that way over time. 
With the Law Zetas, many of them truly were evil to their core from the very beginning, but others seemed to have gotten pulled into something dark and twisted and quickly realized that there was no way out. You cannot betray the cartel and expect to be let off the hook, especially when you are part of Los Zetas. You owe your life to them, and it can quickly become a kill or be killed kind of situation. So when Younger's members of the cartel were ordered by higher-ups to kidnap, torture, and kill innocent people, they had no choice but to do as they were told, whether they wanted to or not. The alternative was most likely them being the ones dying in an unspeakably ugly and painful death. One former Mexican drug cartel member is currently incarcerated after being brought to justice for his life of crime. In an open and honest interview, this convict admitted that he committed unspeakable acts while part of the cartel, opening up about some of the most memorable kinds of torture he inflicted on his victims. He was still only 12 years old when he was first pulled into the violence. I was going on 13 years old the first time I took a life. Just one day, I mean, got, him, got invited to Mexico. I didn't know what was going on at first. And I see about six people kneeling down. Then the, the individual, the person in charge, they start laughing. And uh, I think they, they saw that, that scared, panicked look in my face and asked me if I had ever killed somebody. And uh, I said I had, knowing that I, I had never took nobody's life. So he pulled out a handgun, told me to kill that person, the one kneeling in front of me. Can you imagine still being just a child and being asked to kill someone in cold blood? That's the situation this young man found himself in. He knew he didn't have a choice in the matter. So before he could second think anything, he pointed his weapon at the man and killed him. After proving himself to the superiors, they decided to enlist him as part of the cartel. He spent hours being trained to become a cold-blooded assassin and doing target practice. Sometimes that target practice involved innocent human lives. And I know it sounds harsh saying it this way, but it's just the way it is. The people we were using as targets were rival cartel members. They used to be a 50, 60, sometimes over 100 people, just like cattle for the slaughterhouse. And um, there was an area that they, there's a house. They throw them in there. They tell them, look, man, if you can make it out of here alive, we'll give you your freedom. So these people, they're fighting for their lives. Sometimes a few of the living targets would be given weapons just to keep things interesting. They could use those weapons to try to make sure they're the last ones standing in the slaughterhouse. The way they did this was, of course, by trying to kill as many of the other people as they possibly could. But even still, it was rare that there were any survivors when all was said and done. This former cartel member said he got no enjoyment from torturing his victims, but he did it anyway because it was what he was told to do. Honestly, I, I, I didn't like that job especially when it gets so, so bloody. But I, I, I've done it before. Yes, I have. I mean, I, I've done the simple stuff that everybody starts doing. I'm pulling teeth out, cutting fingers up slowly or If you still had any humanity left or human emotions at all, it is hard to imagine how you could get through the day doing things like this. The screams of the victims, the blood, and the gore must surely haunt these cartel members and keep them up at night. Do you think you embraced it? Do you, do you think you enjoyed what you did? I didn't enjoy it. But, uh... tried to be the best at what I was doing. While he carried out his grisly orders obediently, they still weighed on him heavily. I couldn't take it anymore. That's, that's one of the risks I took that I, I just couldn't take it anymore. It was real hard for me. It was, I, I can't, I wasn't living my life. Unlike that former cartel member, there are others who are also incarcerated, who don't seem to have any regret or remorse over what they've done at all. This next cartel killer recalled his victims with a sick smile on his face as if he was reliving a happy memory. In all, how many people did you kill? 
have no idea. No idea? <laughs> you lost track? Okay, so... I mean, could you guess? Are we talking like 10, 20, 30, 50? Between 20 and 30. If there is one thing that is clear from these horrific stories of torture, it is that Los Zetas were among some of the most evil and heartless cartel members to ever exist. The brutality of Los Zetas has left a lasting impact on the Mexican drug trade, influencing other cartels and only continuing the cycle of violence that continues to this day. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.